Hi, in this tutorial, I will discuss a few ways to shape and add character to your trunk by using the displacement, flares, and roots tools inside the SpeedTree modeler. I'll start off by discussing displacement. Displacement is the movement of vertices in order to simulate a rough surface, which is essential if you want to create a realistic and tactile looking model. If you go to your generator's displacement group, you notice that there are two sources you can get your displacement from. Noise, which uses generated noise for the displacement, or height map, which uses the assigned height map that was imported in the displacement tab. I'm now going to show you how this looks by editing the amount properties, which controls how much the vertices should be moved. A common practice here is to display some moderation. Pushing the displacement out too far will get the texture stretching. So you just want to get it at that sweet point. Now in the main displacement group, you notice that you are given two options for mapping. The use UV option maps the displacement by using the coordinates set in the UV mapping group, while the fit to geometry option fits the displacement to the geometry. Sometimes you may want to have exact control over the displacement without having to alter your bark texture placement. You can use the U and V scale properties to control the placement and the displacement. Next, there's a fine displacement group. This applies a secondary noise pattern on top of the first. This is useful when you want to add some more details to your trunk shape. It is the fine scale property right here that allows the user to scale the noise up or down. Lastly, there's the shape group. This adds length creases that follows the direction of the spine. And you can use the twist property to control the amount of spine rotation that is applied to the displacement. As I mentioned earlier, you can use your own height map as a source for displacement. In order to use the height map displacement, you first need to create a displacement asset. You can do this by going to the displacement bar tab, click the plus icon, and select your texture. This will automatically load the height map and give you access to a set of controls that will allow the user to adjust the map without having to go to an outside program, such as channel, which sets the channel on your source file you want to use, smoothing, which blurs the map so that the transitions aren't so sharp. Brightness, which lets you raise or lower the overall brightness of the map. And contrast, which increases the separation between the light and dark parts on the map. Okay, so now I'll go back to the displacement group and change the type to my recently imported displacement asset. As you can see, this adds a layer of complexity that just using the noise type didn't have. Something to keep in mind is that the amount of detail all depends on how many segments you have set on your trunk or branch. As you add more length and radial segments, the details will become sharper. And as you reduce the segments, less and less of the details will show, just like I'm demonstrating here. Flares are another type of displacement that is designed to simulate a trunk as it expands into the root system. Here you'll find a group of properties that will help achieve the look you want. The radius property sets the maximum radius amount for any of the flares created by the displacement. The noise scale controls the scale of the noise pattern that creates the flares. The height property sets the distance the flares extend up the spine. and pinch controls the amount the flare should be pulled into the center spines. Okay, that's looking good. Now another way to add shape to your trunk is by adding roots. If you go to the Generation Editor Decoration Group, you'll find a roots template. The roots template is just branch generators that we've set up for ease of use. To set up your own, you just have to add branches near the base of the trunk by using the first and last properties and set the start angle closer to the value of 1, so the roots are pointing down. For roots, the welding area is very important. I tend to not want lower spread applied to them because it can cause the welding to fail. Also, if using flares, you can position the roots on the extended flare areas to create a seamless transition by using the welding properties. 
Just gonna make some quick edits. One frequently asked question that we receive is how to create buttress roots, like the ones that are found on the large rainforest trees. So once you added your roots and placed them in the desired position, you'll want to go to the skin group and apply some squash. The squash property reduces the scale on one side of the branches in order to get a flatter shape. Okay. You can then use the rotate property to turn where the flattened area is located on the branch. You can also use the blue curve to increase or decrease the squash effect based off the position on the spine, just like I'm doing right here. Okay. Here I have a scene showing three trunks made using these tools. Something to keep in mind is that you can also use forces on the roots. As you can see with the trunk with the buttress roots, there is a plain mesh that was turned into a mesh force and then applied to the roots. On the second tree, gravity was used to get the roots pointing down. And the last tree just has displacement applied to it. Also, each of these trunks have a height map that is being used to create displacement. Well, that's it for this video and thank you for watching.